Welcome to lesson 49 of your distance learning session for Geology Upper Six Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. This uh, lesson 49 begins a new topic, that is map work. Map work is partitioned into two. We have interpretation of geologic features on maps as well as photo interpretation. We shall concentrate on the first part, which has to do with interpretation of geologic features on maps. Under this uh, subtopic, we will look at types and categories of geologic maps, characteristics of geologic maps, direction and orientation on maps, scale of maps, conventional geologic symbols on maps, geometrical properties of, uh, on maps, and then we look at strike lines, we we'll continue to look at three-point problems, and then we will look at geological history, construction of geological sections, and we will handle interpretation of geological structures or features on maps. Then this particular portion of map work will end with steps in identification and interpretation of geological photographs. Now our lesson 49 therefore is focused on types of maps. Under types of maps, we will try to look at the different objectives. We will have prerequisites, we'll look at the real life situation, lesson activities, we we'll look at some exercises, and we shall end with assignment. Now, as we look through the different types of maps, we should be able to define cartography as well as a map. And we will be able again to align the four main types of maps. Now why we do this? There is information that is very essential as far as map work is concerned. Now we need information on denudational geology. That is, the different processes that wear away materials on the Earth's surface. This is vital information for map work. And we look at the different petrological types. That is, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. The powerhouse of map work because it is within the rocks that we have the different features as well as structures that are captured and then used for developing maps. Now we look at structural geology, which is the backbone. That is, the different features and structures, the way they are aligned, the way they are presented, can only be best understood if we look at map work. So structural geology is one of the guiding topics for map work. Then historical geology, that has to do with paleontology and stratigraphy. This way, this information will be able to help us as we go through uh, different lessons on map work. Now, in a real life situation, a student economic geologist reads a documentary which reveals that the earth, the earth surface is largely made up of water bodies and land masses, which are unevenly distributed. You also rec uh, recognize the fact that water bodies cover 71% and land masses 29%. Then he noted the fact that the 29% land masses constitute continents made up of human race, culture, physical features, 
grouped into Asia, Africa, Central and South America, North America, Antarctica, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. And that the 71% of water bodies covers oceans, seas, lakes, and rivers. Now, scientifically, what is the science behind the unevenly distribution of land masses and water bodies? That is what the economic geologist ponders about. Is the science behind this unevenly distribution of land masses and water bodies based on information technology? Those are just hypotheses. Is it based on communication technology? Or it is based on map making? Whichever be the right or the possible hypothesis, we will see and resolve it as we go through our lesson. Now, observe the diagram below, which is a map, and you deduce the physical aspects. Now, look at the map. It's map one. And on map one, we have uh, the different uh, uh, continents of the world in different colors. And then, we have the blue color representing the different water bodies. So the different continents will re represent the different land masses and the water, the blue color represents the different water bodies. Now, what are the essential aspects that are illustrated by this map? The essential aspects here will include the distribution of what? Continents and oceans. Now, the distribution of continents and oceans now guides us to the element of map work because the distribution that we have seen is from a map. Therefore, that guides us to our lesson on map work or on the different types of maps which has to do with cartography and a map. Therefore, what is cartography? Cartography. Carto from the Greek word is simply a map. And it is also borrowed from the French acronym, Carto, which means map. Now, cartography, graphy, simply means form. So in general, cartography is the science of making maps. What then is a map? From figure one, which was titled Map 1, you can realize that a map is a diagrammatic, two-dimensional representation of a given portion or whole of the earth. By two dimension, we mean paper presentation or a chart, because two dimensions simply means the length and the width. So a map is a reduced two-dimensional representation of a given portion or of whole of the earth. Now, after having looked at cartography and a map, we will now proceed to look at the different types of maps. We have four main types of maps. That is topographic maps, also called base maps, hydrographic maps, demographic maps, and geologic maps. Geologic maps are both solid and drift. We will proceed to look at each of this map type. We we'll get the meaning and have a description of what it is supposed to be. Now, the first is a topographic map. Observe map two. This is map two. And you deduce most striking aspects of this map. Look at the map, you will realize that there are some traces with values. And then you also have a case where the contours are crossing and 
you can see a string. So, the striking features for this uh, map are contours with numbers 500 and 600. And then you have the presence of a string. Now, maps with contour lines denote the topography of an area. So that helps us to understand what a topographic map is. Therefore, a topographic map should be that map that shows changes in elevation throughout the map area using lines of constant elevation. That is what we call contour lines. So when there is representation of information, especially when it has to do with elevation or height above sea level, we know that we are talking about the topographic map. Now, topographic maps are called base maps. Why? Because they represent the most essential information before any other map can be adopted or can be drawn up. Now, we move to the next uh, type of map, the hydrographic maps. Now, hydrographic maps uh, can be pictured using this diagram. Now, you observe this map, title map 3, and you deduce the most striking features. If you look at that map, you will realize that there is numbering from 1, 2, 3, and 4. All the ones here, they represent the beginning maybe of a string, and then 4 here represents the main stream, which is facing to where it will be emptied. So, the striking features on map 3 will include branches which indicate tributary streams. Then values in other 1, 2, 3, and 4, which represents the progress from low to high. Therefore, tributary streams Cumulate into the main stream. Four, which is the what? The bigger stream. Therefore, this suggests the hydrographic network of the area. So, this hydrographic network, therefore, helps us to know that the area has been, uh, represents the hydrology of that area. So, that guides us to what? A hydrographic map. From that information, a hydrographic map, therefore, is a map that covers the surface of the earth or that covers the surface of an area. The area could be what? Oceans and most likely large water bodies. So these maps, they show what? The distribution of large water bodies or the different water bodies in an area. And they show the what? The drainage network of an area. They are also, that is, the fact that they show the drainage network of an area, therefore helps us to understand that they can be used for water development projects. Therefore, the hydrographic maps should assist us in community water development. After this lesson, you should be able to go to your community, you get the topographic map, and then you adopt the different drainage systems, and you can bring out the drainage pattern of your area and assist your area for water catchment projects. Move to the third type of map. We have demographic maps. Now, you observe this map of Cameroon, and you deduce the striking aspects or elements. If you look at this map, you will realize that it is partitioned into different uh, regions, as well as different subdivisions and divisions. So, the most striking features here are boundaries of different localities. Each locality has a boundary that separates it from the next. Then, 
They, we also have black spots, and these black spots, they indicate the different capital cities and the people settlement. Therefore, people settlement will denote what? The demography of an area, which helps us to understand that that map is called a demographic map. Therefore, a demographic map from where demo comes, and demo simply is what? Settlement or human settlement should be those maps that show distribution of population and or oh, human settlement. Again, a demographic map should be that map that shows distribution of population and or oh, human settlement. They are also called cadastral maps and they are therefore used for town planning and urban development. Very important. Demographic maps are useful for town planning as well as what? Urban uh, 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 restructuring and planning as well. When you go by the roadways, you may see a building and you may see the council of the area come and put a cross and write on it, stop. That means, with respect to the map of the area, construction work is not supposed to be done around that area. So you have to give attention to the authorities so that you guide or you assist in town development, thanks to demographic maps. Now we we'll move to the fourth type of maps. We have geologic maps. Geologic maps are types of maps that have a representation of a whole stock of geology. So observe map five and you deduce the striking elements. This is map five. Look at this. And it's a key. Then you also have some structures and they are lettered. Then you have uh, some beds and rock formations. So the striking aspects of map five or map four will involve symbols of different rock types. Then regular repetition of beds, which indicates folds. You have displacement of beds, which indicates Forms. Then you have linear and semicircular structures which indicate intrusions. Now, features of rocks denote the geology of an area. Therefore, a geological map is the topographic map on which different rock types and geologic features are represented. Again, a geologic map represent that map on which different rock types and geologic features are represented. Now, recall that cartography is the science of making maps. And that a map is a reduced two-dimensional representation of a given portion or whole of the earth. There are four common types of maps. We have topographic maps, we have hydrographic maps, we have demographic maps, and we have geological maps. Now, we dive into exercises. Now, our first exercise will uh, be to resolve the situation we provoked at the beginning of the lesson. So, what is the science behind the unevenly distribution of land masses and water bodies? Which is the science, or what is the science behind the unevenly distribution of land masses and water bodies? A. Information technology. B. Communication technology. C. Map making. Information technology has to do with computing in a computer, as well as communication technology has to do with what transaction and giving out information. 
So, therefore, the most likely way or the most likely science behind the unevenly distribution of what? Land masses and water bodies should be what? Map making. Remember that we are looking at the map of the world. And the map of the world is only developed through the different land masses and the different water bodies. So, C is the correct option. The only science that can be built behind the unevenly distribution of land masses and water bodies is map making. Next question. Match the following correctly to relate types of uh, uh, types of maps and definitions. You have on the table type of map and you have uh, description. Topography, you have one, topogra uh, topographic maps, you have two, hydrographic maps, three, demographic maps, and four, geological maps. Then on the description, show distribution of population, show the changes in elevation, and then show rock types and uh, geology, uh, geologic features, as well as D, cover surface of water bodies. So, one will match B, that is, topographic maps will show the changes in elevation. Then two will match with D, that is, uh, hydrographic maps will show, will show, are those maps that will indicate, uh, that cover the surface area of water bodies, or the surface uh, of water bodies. Then, uh, three matches A. That is, demographic maps will show distribution of population. Then four matches C, which indicates that geological maps will show rock types and the geologic features. So that is the right approach to this kind of questions. And note should be taken that this kind of questions help to assess a whole content of our lesson. Now, study the hydrographic map below and answer the questions that follow. Now, if you look at this map, you will realize that there is, is, a, is, is a map showing the drainage network of an area. You have one, 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 and then ones will rejoin to form two, and then one and two will continue flow as two, and then one and two again will continue flow as two. And then two flows. Then you come this way, you have one and one will continue flow as two. Then one and one, two. And then two and two will continue flow as three. Then one and one will continue flow as two. Then three and two will continue flow as three. And finally, you have three and three continue flow as four. Note should be taken here that in stream ordering, we can determine the source and the mouth of a stream or of a river. Now, in stream development, you have it that when there is serious downpour, you see water just flows over everywhere. That kind of water that just flows over everywhere is referred to as sheet wash, and it is given the other one. So, the whole, the, in our diagram, the ones will represent uh, sheet wash. Then, when so many sheet washes rejoin, they now give us uh, reels, and reels are given the other two. So two in our uh, hydrographic map represents the reels. Then when a sheet wash and a reel rejoin, it will flow as reel. Therefore, they have been captured. The reel has captured the sheet wash. Then when reels rejoin, which is two and two, like uh, this case, these two and two, they will flow as three in stream ordering. In stream ordering, two plus two is equal to three in stream ordering. That is uh, uh, arithmetic in stream ordering. So it will give the uh, stream order three, which is called a brook or a creek. Then when two and three, like this case, when you have three and two joining, it will flow as three because there is capture. A brook will capture a reel. Then when three and three rejoin, like in this case, 
When three and three rejoin, they will flow as four. And in this case, it is a small string. When fours then rejoin, they flow as five, which is now a big stream called a river. That is the analogy in this uh, uh, hydrographic maps. Now, question. Which geological feature is formed when tributary two and three join in the map? For example, a rill and a brook rejoin. They will flow as, as a, a brook. So, which feature would have been formed? A. Capture. B. Drainage pattern. C. Dendrite. C. Uh, D. Rejuvenation. A correct answer is A. Capture or piracy. When a low order, a lower order stream joins with an upper order stream, there is capture. The upper order captures the lower uh, 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 order because the erosional activity in the higher order stream is powerful than for the lower order stream. Question four. From the map, the stream order four forms A, stream source, B, maturing stream, C, stream bed, D, main stream. The correct answer is D. It forms the main stream. Then, as our assignment, develop the stream other of an area shown by the hydrographic map below. We are going to see the map. And then still, which water development project is suitable for this area? This is the, the hydrographic network of, an, of the area. So we are going to assess it, do the development of the different stream ordering, and then say what kind of developmental, what are developmental projects can be carried on in the area that is drained this way. Now, you will read on geology for advanced level so that it will assist you to appropriate again the lesson that we have had and do your assignment. Then, fundamentals of geology and the principles of geology. This way, we have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on categories of geological maps.